Okay, what's going on YouTube? It's your boy Richard Razor Sharp and I'm back with another video. Currently, uh, we are on lockdown in the UK, uh, which means that at the moment barbers can't work, people can't work, we can't go out and get haircuts. Um, so what I'm gonna do today is for anyone who's never cut their own hair before, this is something I've been doing now for over 20 years. Um, so I wanna show you four simple uh, haircuts that you can do on yourself um, just to neaten yourself up a little bit because we all feel a little bit better after we've got a fresh trim. So let me just quickly make a disclaimer before I get attacked by barbers here. For guys who are gonna try this, this is not to say that after this lockdown is over that you don't go to your barber. The first thing you need to do after this lockdown's over is go and see your barber and support them because they are self-employed and they need your service. So go and support your barber and book in with them. Even leave them a tip, yeah, help them get back on track. But this is just gonna show you a quick um, way that you can neaten yourself up um, in this lockdown period. Okay guys, so here's my clipper case and like all barbers, I have a lot of clippers, trimmers, etc. Um, but for this video, I wanted to keep it as real to life as what you may have at home. So when I first started cutting my own hair, I only had one clipper. I didn't even have a trimmer. And so for this video, I'm just going to use one clipper, my wall magic clip cordless, um, a few guards, brush, comb, um, I'll use a cutthroat as well for the shape up, but that's all I'm going to be using to deliver the four different cuts that you're going to see in this video. Okay guys, so to start my shape up, I'm actually blending in the front of my hair by going against the grain with the same number comb. I'm using a 1.5 guard and I'm flicking against the grain to blend in the front of my hair. Now I'll take down the top of my hair to that 1.5 guard. Now I usually have a fade, so you can tell already that my hair is slightly higher on top. But if you wanted to do one level all over, you would just go all the way round using this guard. I'd recommend going over your hair a couple of times to ensure that you have a nice level surface going with the grain. Now to do the back of your hair, you're going to need a mirror so that you can see what you're doing and you just angle the mirror so you get a good view of the back of your head. And once again, I'm using the 1.5 guard and I'm going with the grain. Now a quick tip here is to be mindful of your crown area as your hair grows outwards in different directions from this point. So be mindful of that so that you don't go against the grain and take your hair shorter in one spot than the rest of your head. Okay, I've now taken down my hair to the desired length and I'm happy that everything's even so I'm going to begin to work on the shape up. Now to do the shape up, what you need to do is close the bail arm on your clipper which moves the back cutting blade nearer to the front. So I've zero gapped these uh, warm magic clips so that I can use it to do a shape up. Now you want to brush your hair down so it lies flat and you'll notice my technique for doing a shape up on myself is different from when I'm cutting a client. So I've actually turned the clipper back to front. Now you may wonder why am I doing this? it's so that I can see my hairline. You can do it the other way where the clip is facing towards you if you're more experienced, but this video is for people who are doing this maybe for their first time. So hold the clipper back to front and it allows you to have a very good field of view of your hairline. So when you shape up, you don't push your hairline too far back. And I'd encourage you just to take your time with this. Don't rush and you'll do a great job. Now 
now you can see I'm about to do uh, the front side of my shape up. So what I'm doing here is I'm using my other hand to stretch the skin and then I'm gently tapping the hairline and pulling away from it to get a nice crisp line. Okay, so here's the results after doing one half of my hairline. And as you can see, just using a standard uh, clipper can still get a really good sharp line. And now I'm gonna continue and do the other side now. now starting to shape up the side of my head to get that curved arch. Now note here that I'm not using the whole width of the clipper blade but I'm just using the corner almost like a pencil to draw that arched shape that I want on the side of my hairline. So once again, I've got my mirror so that I can do my shape up at the back and brushing down my hair just to make sure that it lies, lies nice and flat. Now, to do the shape up of your back of your head, um, if you notice the way I'm holding the clippers, this takes a bit of getting used to, but you just once again want to gently touch a hairline and move away from your hairline when shaping up the, uh, the back of your head. So this takes a bit of practice, takes a bit of getting used to, so I'd encourage you just to take your time when doing this, but it will deliver great results. Now have a quick look in the mirror just to check the work that you've done. Here I'm using a cutthroat razor uh, to go over my hairline. Now you may not have access to one of these and it's no problem if you don't, but if you do, it's well worthwhile doing it as it makes your hairline extra sharp and it allows the shape up to last for longer. You'll probably get an extra two, three days of a really sharp line when you use a cutthroat razor, so I highly recommend it. Okay, so that's the first self cut done, which is my own shape up. I've not used any dye, any hair fibers, just one clipper, a cutthroat razor, and that's it. And you can see the results. So now that I've done my own shape up, 
I'm going to show you another simple cut that you can do which is a front taper which basically means fading the front sides of your head and as you can see here I've got the bail arm closed on my clippers and I'm going to put in the skin line so I'm only going up about an inch from my temple upwards but note here that I'm not cutting past my ear so I'm now opening up the bail arm and I'm going to go up about a quarter of an inch if that uh, to put in my next barrier and now I'm going to move the bail arm halfway between open and closed and I'm going to begin to flick out in a C motion from where I did the skin level so I'm not going to go all the way up to where I had the bail arm open but just midway between the skin level and where the bail arm was open to fade out that line. I'm now attaching a 0.5 guard to my clipper and I'm going to use this to create another barrier. So I currently have the bail arm open and I'm going up about a quarter of an inch again and flicking out in that C motion. So once again I'm closing the bail arm and I'm going to begin to flick out the bottom of the line where you could see uh, a clear line. I want to fade that out so I'm flicking up just beneath that line to blend it out. And once again note that I'm not going back past my ear. You'll notice that after I flicked up I'm then coming down on top with the clipper and um, this helps to blend in the hair and don't be afraid to do this process a few times you ultimately want to see any lines blended out so you flick up in that C motion and then you can come down on top of it um, to help blend in the hair. So I'm now attaching a number one guard to my clipper and I've closed the bail arm and I'm fading just above where I had the 0.5 guard with the bail arm open and once again you'll notice I'm doing that same motion of flicking out in a C motion going up and then coming down on top to blend in my hair and as you can see here the fade is really starting to take shape. So now I'm just doing a little bit of touch up work to refine the fade, just going through the steps that I've already mentioned, again just to make sure the fade looks really smooth. I'm now using my second mirror to check how the blend looks. When you're happy with how your fade looks, then repeat the same process on the other side of your head. Okay guys, so that's the second cut done. Uh, taper fade, and apologies uh, for my glasses arms uh, getting in the way of you seeing the skin level, but you can tell that it's blended. Okay, so now we're going into the third cut, which is a full taper. Uh, the previous cut was just a front taper where I tapered the front sides of my head and a full taper is where you taper the front sides but also the lower back of your head. So that's what I'm beginning to do right now. And as you can see I'm going in without any guard with the bail arm closed to put in that skin line. And now I'm opening up the bail arm and I'm going to create my next barrier going up about a quarter of an inch again. You don't want to go too high as this fade isn't meant to go too high up your head. Now I'm 
going to fade out that bottom skin line by putting the bail arm halfway between open and closed. And then I'm just going to use that seam motion to take out that first barrier. So you can see that I'm going through the same steps on the back of my head as I did on the side. So I start without any guard on and I put in that skin line with the bail arm closed. I then open up the bail arm and create my next barrier. I then place the bail arm halfway between open and closed and I fade out that skin line. And then now as you can see here, I've attached my 0.5 guard with the bail arm open and I've gone up to create a new barrier and then I put the bail arm closed and I begin to fade out that previous barrier and you just keep going through this process and you get a blend. So I've now attached a number one guard with the bail arm closed and I'm fading just above the last area using that C motion again, just flicking out to blend in the hair. And as I said before, don't expect your blend to just come straight away. You have to keep working at these steps. And as you can see, after flicking up, I'm coming down from just above the area where I flicked up to help blend in there in the hair. So it takes a bit of time, but if you keep at it, you'll get a nice blend. Okay, so here it is, the back taper fade. And normally what you would do is you would do your fade first and then you would shape up afterwards to really make it pop. Okay, so we're now in the fourth cut for this video, which is gonna be a mid-level skin fade. This is the haircut that I normally do on myself every week. And as you can see, I'm putting in the skin line and I'm going up about an inch and a half from my temple to put in that first barrier. Once again, I'm using my mirror so that I can clearly see the back of my head. And I'm gonna put in that skin line going around the back of my head. And the way I like to do my fade, I slightly angle it so it's a bit lower at the back than on the sides. When cleaning off the excess hair, just be careful as you're coming up because you don't want to go too high and potentially move that skin line up any further. So just be careful with that. I'm now going to use my 0.5 guard with the bail arm closed and I'm going to create my next barrier by going up about an inch uh, from the skin line. I've now taken the 0.5 guard off and I've got the bail arm open and I'm now going to fade out that first zone um, that I created. So I'm just going up in a C motion again, flicking out just below where I created that barrier with the 0.5 guard. This is often referred to as a fade down method. I'm now going to move the bail arm halfway between open and closed to help me blend out that skin line. And once again, using the C motion, I'm just flicking up gently just below where I worked before. And this helps to blend out that skin line. I'm doing here to get the skin line completely out I've closed the bail arm and then I've opened it ever so slightly so that I can just flick out from where I created that first skin line and that just helps make a smooth transition so that we do not see any hard lines in the fade I'm now going to take my number one guard and I've got the bail arm closed as you can see and I'm gonna go up about an inch just below where you can see that hard line. And this is gonna create a new barrier for me to fade out. 
I've now put the 0.5 guard back on with the bail arm open and I'm going to begin to fade just below where I used the one guard closed. So that's my new fade zone that I'm going to work on. As you can see now I'm just flicking up gently uh, just to blend in that fade zone. Now I've got my one guard with the bail arm open and I'm now going to show you how to blend the top of the head into the side of the head. So as you note know here I'm going down on my one blade with the bail arm open and that's connecting the top to the sides. So it makes it easier then for me to blend the rest of the side of my head. Using that C motion I'm now flicking up and out to begin to blend the top of the side of my head so that we have a smooth fade transition. I've now moved the bail arm to the closed position and I'm flicking up again in that C motion just below where I was working before. So this is helping to connect the fade so we get that smooth transition that I've been talking about. the fade steps that I showed you on both sides of my head and the back of my head. Um, I just suggest here that you will take a lot longer to fade the back of your head because you're holding the clipper in an awkward angle so that's going to take a little bit more time um, but if you follow the steps that I've shown you you'll achieve a really good fade. So there you have it guys there is a mid-level skin fade and as you can tell nicely blended all the way around from the front back sides and with a good shape up you're going to look fresh whilst we're in isolation and in quarantine no i haven't touched my beard in this video but i did that later nacho, 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 nacho.